Hi everyone. So in this video I'm going to show how I reverse engineered the Logitech uh, smooth scrolling functionality that some of their uh, computer mice have. Um, so first of all, if you're not familiar with what that is, I'll go ahead and show you. So I have my website open in uh, the Chrome web browser. And with my with this mouse, it has a really high uh, resolution scrolling wheel. And so when I scroll, I get this really smooth, fluid motion. Um, it, it's like as if you're using a touchpad or a touchscreen. And uh, whereas if you have a regular mouse, you're probably used to something kind of like this, where it'll go line by line and just kind of jump like that. And um, so that's kind of what I wanted. And the reason why uh, I wanted to get that smooth scrolling functionality, uh, I'll go ahead and show you really quickly, is in my earlier videos, you might have seen this telemetry viewer program that I've been working on for uh, quite a long time. And um, just set it up real quick. So um, it, it's for charting telemetry data. This is just the test waveform. Um, but as I've shown in the earlier videos, I, it's a program that will let you um, look at data from a microcontroller or an FPGA. And you can rewind and fast forward, zoom in and all that. Um, and what I wanted was, so if I use my scroll wheel now, I can rewind time. And I wanted this, this behavior, this really smooth scrolling, um, high, high resolution scrolling. And it's actually particularly useful when you're zooming in. So if I hold down control and scroll to zoom in, I get this really smooth, uh, fluid behavior that, uh, that I wanted. See, it's really, uh, really smooth and uh, fluid. So um, that's, that's kind of the reason why I went about this project. Um, and in case it isn't terribly clear, let me go ahead and show you again. Um, this is what it looks like if you scroll with a normal mouse. And then this is what it looks like if you scroll with a, um, a Logitech mouse that has the high, um, high resolution scrolling, like the uh, Logitech M705 Marathon mouse that I have. So hopefully that kind of cleared up the differences. It should be should have made it pretty obvious by now. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this video is going to show how I got that all to work with um, that telemetry viewer program that you just saw uh, a minute ago. And um, this is a a very simple, very basic um, reverse engineering project. If you have experience, you're probably not going to be terribly interested in this. But it's kind of a here's the baby steps of figuring out simple things and my whole thought process from start to end. Now let's get right to it. If I open up like a Windows 10 um, like tablet style program, like this settings thing, so you see this has a, a scrolling area here, and I always get that, that nice high resolution uh, smooth scrolling here. So Logitech seems to enable it when you're using these newer Windows 10 like tablet style programs, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it works in Chrome because there is a Chrome extension. But it does not work in, in pretty much anything else, um, which is really, really annoying. Um, and I think the reason why they did that is because if they enable the high uh, resolution scrolling mode, a lot of the older programs that are not designed to, uh, to work with that, they'll interpret every single little scroll amount as if it was scrolling by one line or a couple lines. And so it'll make those older programs nearly unusable. But unfortunately, they didn't really, they kind of gave up. They didn't check to see if the program is using a newer API. So in almost every program, you don't get the, um, the high resolution scrolling. So I noticed that Chrome has this extension and I figured it was probably talking to the device driver from Logitech, but I wasn't 100% sure on how. 
And I'm not a web developer. I don't write very much um, JavaScript or anything like that. Um, so what I kind of tried first was I installed uh, Wireshark. And if you're not familiar with Wireshark, it lets you look at the packets on your network. So if you uh, search for Wireshark and you go to download, you can download um, you know whatever version you need. It's free and open source. Um, and basically, it'll give you a list of all the network adapters in your computer that you can use. Um, some of them are not going to actually be physical adapters, like I have uh, VMware installed, and so there's these um, kind of like virtual or fake network adapters here. Um, and what we need to look at is we want we want to look at the loopback um, adapter or interface or whatever you want to call it, because what's happening is the the Chrome extension is probably talking to the driver and basically it's so you have the driver is probably a web server or probably a server and the chrome extension is probably a client and they're both talking to each other on the same computer so it isn't going over the network it's just kind of looping back onto local hosts <clears throat> now wireshark uh, at least in windows by default um, it does not have a way to look at the loopback so what you need to install is npcap. And um, let's see. If you go to nmap.org slash npcap, um, you can download the installer right here and, uh, and install that. And that'll give you this option right here, which is what you need. Um, it will not work if you just try to look at your Ethernet adapter or your Wi-Fi adapter. You need the loopback adapter. We start to see um, all the all the packets. So I'm going to go ahead and put the window right there. And let me go ahead and close Chrome and I'll reopen it. Or right here, let me scroll down so we can see the, the latest packets. So if I open up uh, Chrome, we see a whole bunch of stuff. And if I if I create a new tab, and every time I create a new tab, I don't know if you kind of saw that we get this WebSocket text. So right here, and um, surprise, surprise! If you look at what the actual uh, like payload is, the, the the content, well, look at that. That looks <laughs> kind of uh, kind of uh, useful. So. It's sending high res true reason content looks good for scrolling. Well, I bet that has to do with the Logitech smooth scrolling. Okay, so that's that's really nice. Um, and if we look here, it's using the web. Uh, there you go, the WebSocket protocol, and it is talking. Uh, you know, source and destination are obviously both um, local hosts because it's on the loopback adapter, and the destination port is five nine two four three. And um, I'm not sure if it was obvious earlier, but every time I created a tab, it did the exact same thing. So we get the same exact thing here. Same exact thing here. <clears throat> so um, what we can do is we can filter so we only see that instead of seeing this whole, all this other stuff that we don't really care about. Um, so there's a, a bar up here for filter. And you can do tcp.port. I've already got it there. Um, tcp.port and then is equal to 59243, which is uh, the port right here. So press enter. We can now get all that data. And so every time I create another tab, you'll see it does the exact same thing. So that's kind of neat. Um, let's. To kind of see what happens at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and stop capturing. I'm going to close Chrome. I'm going to start capturing again. Uh, we don't need to save. Okay, so now we have we we erased all of our our log. We're capturing again, and if I open up Chrome, we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is what happens when you first open up Chrome. Um, there is you know sin and ack, which is just kind of a handshake. 
and it looks like Chrome is doing an HTTP GET request. Um, not really much of a payload there, but um, yeah, so it's a very simple HTTP request, and then we get a uh, switching protocols event, and then we get we get you know the ACK, the acknowledges, and then we get the actual WebSocket data that we we saw earlier. And again, of course, we get an acknowledge for that. Uh, and so, yeah, just like before, every time I create a new tab, it'll send the same message. Uh, also, if I ever click on a link, um, I forgot a mouse here. Every time you click on a link, it'll do the same thing. So it appears like it sends this message to the Logitech driver. Every time you click on a link, every time you create a tab, uh, or close the tab. Anytime you can basically change tabs in Chrome, and um, anytime uh, Chrome gains focus. Um, and actually, let me kind of show you something that might be interesting. Okay, so so I've got Chrome up here, and I have Eclipse up over here. Um, so you can see that in Chrome, I have that nice high resolution scrolling. If I go back to Eclipse, I get that line by line scrolling. But if I if I go to Chrome, you can see sometimes um, it it doesn't do the smooth scrolling, and I think that's probably a bug either in the extension, the Chrome extension, or in maybe in Chrome the event um, dispatch or whatever. I'm not sure. Um, but that's kind of how I figured out this issue. Is I realized that if I switched tabs, it would fix it. More importantly, though, if I leave Chrome as the, the active window, but I just move my mouse over to another window, I get smooth scrolling. Look at that. So that, that was one thing that kind of um, tipped me off into, uh, into kind of how this might work. Uh, and of course, if I, if I click on Eclipse now, then Chrome loses focus, and I go back to line-by-line -line scrolling because the driver... Uh, believes that Eclipse cannot handle the high-resolution scrolling mode, even though it clearly can. Anyway, that was kind of just a, uh, an aside that that's part of what tipped me off on how things worked. Um, so we now know um, what needs to be done. Basically, uh, in, the, in my program, my telemetry viewer program, I need to establish a WebSocket connection I need to connect to localhost, which is 127.0.0.1 .0 .0 on port 59243. And anytime I want to have the high resolution scrolling, I need to send uh, this text. And uh, it's basic, it looks like a, a JSON or JSON object uh, in, in text form. Um, and obviously, I need to send that every time my window gains focus, because as you saw, um, if you lose focus and then get it back, the Logitech driver is going to reset to the the uh, regular low resolution scrolling. Um, so, what I ended up doing was I wrote some code in Java because my program is a Java program, and <clears throat> so it's an object, of course. And in the constructor, uh, when I create the object, I uh, well, okay, let me start over. Um, I'm using the the Jetty WebSocket library, uh, and so um, yeah, so I downloaded Jetty, and then I only used the WebSocket um, parts of that library because it's a very big library. And then here they have kind of their um, their demonstration code of, of how to uh, actually that's, that's a WebSocket server. Where is client? There we go. So this is um, their kind of hello world demo code of how to create a WebSocket client, which is what I based my code off of. Um, of course, they have it much more involved because they're doing you know um, they're actually using it for you know more than I am. I'm just sending. A string of text every now and then, um, and so yeah, so I create the WebSocket client, which is um, you know part of that Jetty library, 
um, I start that WebSocket client and then connect to localhost port 59243. And it's more readable. There we go. Um, and then you need to give it a um, client upgrade request object. Um, and so, of course, and this can throw an exception, so you need to catch that. And I don't really care about it, so I just print it out and ignore it. And then after you get a um, connection, it will call whatever method you have that you have flagged with at on WebSocket Connect. So I call that method on Connect. It'll give you a session object, and you can use that to um, send a string. And basically, that is what we saw in in Wireshark. Um, of course, you have to escape the uh, the quotation marks, so you have to use the slash, you know, all over the place. But that's all it is. And then. Um, like I mentioned earlier, anytime I lose focus and then regain focus, I need to re-enable the high resolution scrolling. So I created a method here, um, which basically does the same thing. It will check if the session is open. If it is, it will um, send that string again. If it isn't open, it will try to connect. And then again, of course, when you get a connection, it will call this method and I will uh, try to enable high resolution scrolling. And that's really all there is to it. So yeah, it's basically like you know, if you if you get rid of the try catch and all that kind of boilerplate, it's like five lines of code. Really easy. Um, and I've kind of documented all of that in the comment block at the top, which is kind of what I've been showing in this video. I, I cover it here in text form. Uh, and then, like I kind of mentioned here at the bottom, I'll go ahead and explain how I verified um, that I am actually talking to the Logitech code and not, you know, some random stuff. So if you open up uh, CMD, which is you know your like your DOS prompt or whatever you want to call it, command prompt, um, you need to open it as administrator. So right click, run as admin, and then um, I hope my uh, screen capture stuff didn't cut out. Anyway, uh, hopefully you can still see this. Um, here we have the uh, the command prompt running as an oops uh, running as an admin. And if you do netstat -a -b -n, you'll get a huge long list of all of the active ports on your computer. And so we want to look for port 59243. So we want to look for like colon 59243. Well, okay, so here it is. Uh, so surprise, surprise, we have chrome.exe. Uh, TCP port 59243 and setpoint.exe on TCP port 59243. And if you're not familiar with Logitech, setpoint is their um, their software. So if you go to mouse and keyboard settings, that is setpoint. There you go. So that's really all there is to it. Um, and that's kind of how I verified that I'm actually talking to the Logitech driver. You know, obviously you kind of want to know what you're doing instead of just blindly repeating what you see in Wireshark. Um, and then um, in case you're wondering, like, why didn't you just look through settings? Um, well, I already did. So for example, um, there's nothing here under tools that would enable the smooth scrolling for every program. Um, there's nothing here. I already have smooth scrolling checked. Um, this will not, you know, that doesn't help. Um, none of this really affects it. I tried game mode. I, you know, I tried different settings. It, it just would not work. I tried OS implementation. Would not, did not help. Um, tried application specific settings. Again, did not help. Uh, oh, battery's kind of low. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so you can see there's nothing here. There's no setting from Logitech that would let me, um, you know, fix this problem as a user. So you have to kind of do it programmatically. Um, anyway, so that's kind of all there is to it. Um, I hope you kind of enjoyed the video. Um, so just a, kind of a brief summary. Um, I used Wireshark, uh, monitored the loopback adapter, and whenever I switched tabs in Chrome, I could see that it was sending that um, WebSocket message. I then um, filtered based on that port number to verify what I thought was happening. And I could see that, yeah, when I open up Chrome, it establishes a connection. And then every time I change tabs or click on a link, it sends that text over the WebSocket. So that kind of confirmed what I thought. Um, 
also, um, after I kind of figured it all out, I realized, you know, it's a Chrome extension. And the people that write Chrome extensions are probably web developers. So it's probably written in JavaScript. So um, I kind of had a feeling that, okay, well, if it's written in JavaScript, I might be able to see the code because, I mean, you know, JavaScript is text that isn't a binary. Um, they could use an obfuscator, but, um, you know, hopefully they wouldn't. So what I did was um, I searched for Chrome extensions install location. And I wanted to figure out where they uh, where they put the the extensions, and it looks like it's located there. So I opened up uh, Explorer, and I went to the C drive and go to Users, and my username happens to be Feral F. So, but whatever your username is, you double click on, uh, and then so there's App Data. Okay, app data is a hidden folder. You may not see it. Um, I am showing hidden folders, but if you're not, what you can do is you can go up here and then you can just type it in. You know, we could type in app data. Um, if you're like me and you you want to see hidden folders, you can go here and you can go to view, options, view, uh, show hidden files, folders, and drives. So you just go here. Uh, but yeah, so either way you can type it in up here or you can show hidden folders. So you go to app data and then you go to local, Google, uh, Chrome, user data, default, extensions. Okay, and then so you get a, um, a directory or a folder with a whole bunch of um, subfolders, and um, it looks to be kind of randomly named. I'm guessing that's a hash or something like that. Um, and so I just kind of went through each one, uh, and they have these icons. So if you double click on it, okay, that looks like the Google, uh, what is that, like the, the PowerPoint from Google or whatever. So I go back and I try the second one. Okay, that's like Google Docs. That's not the plugin I'm looking for. Google Drive, that isn't the plugin I'm looking for, or extension that I'm looking for. YouTube, that's not what I want. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's the logo that I want because that is the logo right here for Logitech Smooth Scrolling. Also, if you go to your Chrome extensions thing, you can kind of see it in full color right there. Um, anyway, so that indicates to me this is the folder that has the code. And okay, surprise, surprise, there is the code. We have four JavaScript files. If you open them up, you can see that they were nice enough to, um, you know, they didn't obfuscate it. They even left their comments in there. So that's really nice of them. I appreciate that Logitech. Pretty quickly, I see this uh, initial function, an init WebSockets. And, well, surprise, surprise, there we have it. Uh, WebSocket on localhost, port 59243. And we can see that it is uh, creating that WebSocket and trying to open it. Uh, now, I'm not a web developer. I don't write JavaScript. I've written, well, I've written like five lines of JavaScript in my entire life. So um, if you're a web developer, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not really uh, into this stuff. Um, but it looks like there's a bunch of logging going on. Um, there's, okay. Um, yeah, so that, that looks familiar, like the high-res part of the, the JSON text we saw earlier. Um, we can see that they look, they seem to be listening to um, tabs being selected. So that, again, corresponds with what we saw earlier, which is great. Um, it appears they do have some logic. Uh, that will let them either enable or disable smooth scrolling. I haven't really looked into the code too much to figure out exactly how they implement that. But um, uh, where do we got? I think yeah. So they have an, an enable smooth scroll function that they can use, um, which I'm guessing sends the um, uh, that, that JSON text that we saw earlier. 
Anyway, I'm not going to go through this in big, in, in uh, incredible detail because, again, I'm not a web developer and I'd probably just confuse instead of help. But you can kind of see that, you know, if if you weren't able to figure it out through Wireshark, uh, at least in this particular, you know, really simple case of reverse engineering, you could look at their source code, which is wonderful, and, you know, you could try to figure it out and plan it out on paper and <laughs> um, work on through it even if you don't know JavaScript. Um, so anyway... I just thought I'd share that. Um, so, yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um, I'm going to um, put this source code up on GitHub so you can look at it. Again, it's really quite simple. And all you really have to do is that. So you connect to it and you send text. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. If you know anybody that might benefit from the video, please uh, share a link with them.